Today we're going to take 10 minutes of our time to create this particular abstract looping animation. It's going to be very simple and we're going to use basic geometry nodes. So with that, let's actually begin the tutorial. So the first thing we need is the extra curves add-on. So we'll go to edit preferences and under the add-ons tab, we're going to search for extra curves. So make sure that you have add curve extra objects checked. And once this is checked, you can go ahead and in your default scene, tap X to delete the default cube. Then press shift A and under curve, you will now see a huge number of new options and we're going to go to knots and under knots, we're going to choose torus knot plus. Now, before you do anything in the drop down over here, you'll have to expand it and just change the revolutions down to one and increase the spins to something like five. Remember when you change these revolutions and spins, those are the numbers that's present over here. So one is the number of resolution and five is the number of spins. And this number of spins is going to come in handy later on. Once you're done with that, you can also change the major radius to something like five and that also stretches it out. So just increase the minor radius to maybe zero 0.5 so that it retains a little bit of its curliness. You can also change the bevel depth down to zero so that it becomes just a curve. Of course, this bevel depth did not have to be done from here. You could always go to the curve properties and then under geometry, you could have changed the bevel depth from here as well. Once you're happy with that, press tab to go into object mode and bring your cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, zoom in and then press shift A and search for a trim curve node. Now the entire animation is going to be created by playing around with this start and end value of the trim curve node. So essentially we're going to start both the start and the end at a value of zero. And then as we start moving the end, the curve will appear, but essentially we're going to make the start also catch up with the end so that it disappears as well by the end of the animation. So we'll do that in the animation section, but till then let's go ahead and make this curve such that it's actually visible. So let's increase the end so that it can be seen and then press shift a and search for a curve to mesh node. Remember, this won't work if you did not change the bevel to zero. As you can see, by increasing the bevel, the trim curve and curve to mesh no longer work. So make sure the bevel is at zero. Then press shift A and search for a curve circle and then plug the curve into the profile curve. But of course, the radius is far too large. So let's reduce the radius to 0.02 meters. The resolution also doesn't have to be this high. So let's make it 16 so that it's a bit faster for our computers or laptops to render. Next, we'll press shift a and search for a set material node, plug that in and just choose the default material for now. Once you're happy with that, we can actually start the animation. So let's tap end to remove this side panel and then click and drag to create a new window and then change this window from the geometry node editor to the graph editor. Now, before we start adding in keyframes, let's set our animation defaults by going to the output properties and changing the frame rate to 60 frames per second. And while we're at it, we can change the resolution to 4K by making this 200% and we want it to be a 10 second long animation. So we'll change the end frame to 600. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, we're going to choose FFmpeg video and encoding. I'm going to choose a container of MPEG4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless. Now I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and I'll change both the start and end to a value of zero and I'll hover over the start and tap I and then hover over the end and tap I. Then I'll go to frame 600 and I'll just change the start all the way to one and the end all the way to one. And then I'll hover over both of them and tap I. Once you've added in keyframes for all of these to actually see the keyframes, just select the trim curve node and they should appear. Now they look like they're flat. So to zoom in on the Y axis, press control middle mouse button and then just drag up or down to actually zoom in on the vertical axis. You can drag right and left to zoom in and out on the horizontal axis. So once you have that set, you'll realize that you actually added in four keyframes two for the start and two for the end, but you can only see one set of keyframes here and the other set over here. So to see both of them, just expand this geometry nodes button over here. And you can see that you have the red keyframes for one of the values and this C green keyframe for the other values. To see which one is which, just bring your cursor to the junction of these two windows and drag it out till you can see that, okay, the red is for the start and the C green is for the end. So now if you remember at frame zero, we said that we need the end to start faster than the start so that the actual curve is seen. So we're going to have to play around with the end values first. So let's just hide the start values. And then with the end selected, let's select this left hand keyframe. Since we want it to go faster than the start, we're just going to rotate it on the X axis by a value of something like minus 55 degrees so that it actually starts off much faster. Now, if you unhide the red, 
you can see that clearly this is going to start off faster and the red is going to be slower. So if you play the animation, you can see the exact animation that you have. So that's well and good. And if you're happy with the way it looks, you can go ahead and create another version of this that will go around this one. So to create that, just select the torus knot and press Shift D to create another variation and then press RZ to rotate it till it's perfectly out of phase. Now to know exactly how much you should rotate it by, remember that we created five spins, as you can see over here, in 360 degrees. So that means one entire wave is created in 360 divided by five degrees, which is 72 degrees. So every 72 degrees, there's one full wave. And if we want it to go perfectly out of phase, we have to move it half of that. So we're gonna have to rotate it by half of 72, which is 36 degrees. So we'll press RZ 36 or minus 36 based on your preference. For now, I'll go with minus 36 itself. But now, even though it's perfectly out of phase, phase, the start and end has also shifted. So to fix this shift in the start and end, what you can do is you can go to the keyframes here and manipulate these. But right now, because they're sharing the exact same geometry node tree, if you were to select all the keyframes and move them in one of them, they move for the other one as well, which won't help us in any way. So press this button to make it its own node tree and then you can manipulate these keyframes separately without affecting the other one. Now we can press GX to move it on the X axis, which will essentially make this go forward or backward. And maybe we'll move it by something like 50 frames in the negative axis so that they line up perfectly. Once you have these lined up, if you actually play the animation, you'll still notice one slight issue and that will happen right at the end. You'll see this just stops right here while that one stops much further ahead. So if you want to actually fix that, what you could do is select both of these and then go to the modifier panel over here. Remember, if you don't have those selected, even if you select the keyframes by tapping A, the modifier panel will not appear. So make sure you select them over here and then go to the modifier panel. If this panel is not present, tap N to bring it out and choose add modifier and choose cycles. Now, as soon as you choose cycles, the red values will become linear. So to fix that, instead of choosing repeat motion, we'll just choose repeat mirrored. And that way it actually maintains that nice curve that we had, which is exactly what we want. So once we have that set, we can go ahead and create a few variations of this. So we'll select both of these and press shift D to duplicate them. We want to offset the position which is getting trimmed. So we can actually select each of these and just tap A to select everything and offset them so that they come in front of their other variations. But again, because they're sharing the same geometry node tree, they're going to move both of them together. We don't want that. So let's duplicate it and then press GX. And now now you can see we can bring it in front of the other one. Now because the length of these curves are changing, you might think that it's in front, but at some point it might suddenly grow. So make sure you select the original, see the distance where this is maximum, and that means that is where the length of the curve is the most. So the distance between this curve and this curve will be maximum when this length of the curve is maximum as well. So make sure you're at a frame that's approximately where it's maximum. So something like this, and that's when you should take this and move it to the side to see that it's almost touching, but not perfectly touching. So if you actually look at it now, we have moved it by about 457 frames, which means we moved it by 143 frames on the X axis. So because we do that for this, we have to move this knot as well by the exact same amount. So tap A to select everything and press G X minus 143. So that way we get perfect synchronic motion, but we still have one issue. And that is that this curve does not have its motion repeated. So let's just select both of these, click add modifier, choose cycles. And for the X values, make sure you change it to repeat mirror. Now I don't see the curve over here. And that's because remember when you change this, you have to remember to duplicate the curve first. So make sure you duplicate it first before pressing G X minus 143. So now you can do the same thing towards the back or maybe in front of this one as well. It's really up to you and how your camera is positioned. Let's select these or these and press shift D. Make sure you select both of these and make them their own node trees. And then you can actually select both of them and just press A to select everything down here and press G X with your cursor down here to move it in front. So once you're happy with that, select your camera and press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation and press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then press zero on your numpad to go into your camera view, select the camera and change the focal length to something like 18 so that we get a much wider field of view. Then go to 
to frame 0 and tap I rotation and then go to frame 600 and press R Z 360 so that it does one full rotation and then tap I rotation. Now select the camera and to see the keyframes just control middle mouse button to bring it out and then tap T linear so that it becomes a smooth loop when you actually animate it. You can also go to your viewport display and change passport out all the way to 1 so that nothing outside the camera view can be seen. If you're happy with the way everything is looking you can start texturing so for that let's switch our viewport shading to rendered right click and choose join areas to remove this window change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor go to our render properties switch on bloom expand it and change the intensity to 0.02 and we'll clamp it down at something like 5 as well we'll switch on screen space reflections we'll go to our world properties and change the background color all the way to black we'll choose our default light and delete it then we'll select any one of our torus objects and just choose the default material and let's go ahead and select the principled psdf and tap x to delete it and then press shift a and search for an emission node then plug this into the surface and we'll just change the color to any two colors that you want maybe this one i'll make a green yellow combination so i'll change it to green and make the strength to something really high let's go with 500 and essentially we should have created another material and use that for all of the other alternate torus knots so let's select this one just go back to the geometry node editor and just choose another material so let's go to the material properties press this plus button to create a new material and choose that over here then we'll go to this torus knot and choose that same material and this alternate one and choose that material as well now back in our shader editor we'll go ahead and select that material and do the exact same thing delete the principled psdf press shift a search for an emission plug the emission into the surface and change the color to the other color that we wanted which was a yellow color make sure that you increase the strength to the same value which was 500 and then you have this animation to make this animation much more interesting you can play around with the background so the first thing that we need to do is add in a floor plane so let's press shift a and search for a mesh and then to see the mesh let's just go back to the solid viewport shading and then press gz to bring it down just underneath the curves then press s to scale it up and type in some large number let's go with something like 20 then continue by pressing gz and bringing it down till it's perfectly underneath the curves then press this button to add in a new material and go back to your viewport shading of render and just increase the metallic value all the way to one and increase the base color to a complete white by making the value all the way to one then press shift a and search for a noise texture and a voronoi texture to add in the nice reflections and then plug the color from the noise texture into the vector of the voronoi texture now press shift a and search for a color ramp so that we get better control and plug the color from the voronoi texture into the color ramp and this color can go into the roughness of the principal psdf now you might not see the texture so to see the texture just increase the scale on the noise texture to the scale you scaled the plane up by so that was 50 and similarly you can just change the Voronoi texture scale to something like 10. Now this doesn't look too good because the plane is either completely reflective or completely non-reflective. So to fix that, let's select this black handle and change this from a value of 0 to a value of 0 0.2. And for the white handle, we'll bring it in and change it from a value of 1 to a value of 0 0.6. So that just makes much better reflections. And now to make the reflections even better, we can add in some walls behind the curves that will reflect back onto the plane and make everything much brighter. So we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh cylinder but before we do anything let's just expand this and increase the vertices to something like 256 so that it's nice and smooth then we'll increase the radius till it goes just beyond our curves so maybe a radius of 5.5 is good enough and if you want there to be a ceiling you can keep the depth just like this but i don't want the ceiling to be seen so i'm going to increase the depth up till it goes outside my camera view and then i'll press this button to choose the same material we created in the floor which was material 0.002 and i'll press this button to duplicate it and this time i'm just going to reduce the scale on the noise texture down to something like 5 or 10 and just make sure that it approximately matches the scale of our floor so once you're happy with the way all of that is looking you can go ahead and press render animation i hope this was an easy one and it was very fun to follow along i see videos like this all over stock footage websites so the demand for it is definitely present beyond that this can act as a really good background for different client animations as well product animations and things like that the techniques are worth learning so i hope this was useful to you if you liked it i have hundreds of other looping animations present on my channel that's just waiting for you to discover them i post videos every single day so until the next video comes out tomorrow definitely keep creating and don't forget to stay creative